UFO that looked like a giant jellyfish in the skies of Russia. It also was described as um, having piercing uh, beams of light coming from it that pierced through the asphalt and window panes of the houses nearby, like two to three inch um, holes. Y'all, I just, let me, let me flip this around the sky because they got the sun behind a big cloud again out here. And um, they, did a, they did the sun behind a big cloud yesterday evening, uh, if you're just tuning in. I don't know what they're hiding, I really don't, but you can see it right there. I wanna come over here. I, I could barely even get out of bed this morning. My, my knees area, I could hardly even move them at night. I thought, what is going on? I feel like if I move my knees, they're gonna, they're front gonna fall off and break. Um, I thought this is getting ridiculous. So let me let me look at this over here for the moment, you all. I want to look at this for a second. So we're looking at that, but there was in the video last night. Um, good morning. In the video last night, the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, with that Jules Vort Vernon, we were um, looking at some pictures and reading up on that, and there was this one uh, image of them in their underwater suits, and there was these great big jellyfish-like things in the sky. It looked like they were in the sky, and uh, they had tentacles hanging down, and I thought, you know, there must be, there must be, a UFO that looks like that. Look at this. There must be a UFO that looks like that uh, that has been documented, you all. Um, so um, now, see, this is this right here is distracting me. Now I want to look at this sky right here because this ain't this ain't right, you all. This ain't right. This is yesterday you saw what happened. With this sun, why do they got that big cloud parked in front of it? Is there like a great big giant jellyfish UFO behind that sun too? Um, I would not be surprised if there was something like that up there, a massive, massive UFO mothership up there behind that sun because this is too wild looking. Look at this. Um, they parked it right there, right there in front of that sun as it's going up in the sky. Um, good morning. Uh, I need to focus on what I was saying. So there was this, uh, it was an incident in Russia. It was uh, September the 20th of 1977. And um, this great big massive UFO uh, looked like a jellyfish. There goes a big, um, some kind of big truck. Looked like a great big jellyfish appeared in the sky. And um, it uh, was bright as the sun at one point. It was, it was so bright, you could not even look at it. This um, UFO that looked like a, a jellyfish, it, it literally at one point, it, uh, it went into a cloud. Hello, Susan B. Honey. It went into a cloud, and um, the cloud had like... Um, colors it started changing colors inside the cloud and the clouds started lighting up different colors and um, some reddish orangish colors also showed up but when it came back out um, that's when it became so bright they couldn't even look at it after it came out of the cloud and um, it had like um, a ring around it some type of a ring around it and um, all of a sudden, these piercing lights, they came straight down to the ground. And um, I think they're like yellow bright lights or something like that. They came straight down. I'm going to walk. They came straight down from that uh, UFO that looked like a big jellyfish. That's why they said it looked like a great big jellyfish because um, it was like massive. 
and it pierced holes in the asphalt. And then it, its beams pierced holes in the windows of the houses and stuff nearby, pierced it straight through. And then um, they looked up and there this bulb, this bulb came out from underneath the UFO that looked like a big jellyfish, the big jellyfish UFO. And um, it was like um, scout thing. It went around, flying around, looking at places or over the rooftops of the houses. And then um, it went back up into, it went back up into the jellyfish UFO. And then it shot off. I'm watching this right here because I don't know what they, they got something going on, but they probably got a great big UFO going on behind that cloud and I'm not joking. It shot off into the horizon area where the sky is at. I think it was like, um, I don't know, it made a red, it made a red um, light or something like a red hole and it shot straight to it and it disappeared right in it. Right in it, just boom, and gone, you all. That was like, um, that was on that video last night, the, the 20,000 leagues under the sea, did it exist? But I somehow ended up in Russia with a, a jellyfish UFO that was reported, and they had scientists who did not even want to touch it with a 10-foot pole at risk of their reputation being destroyed. And um, it was sighted all over. And what happened is the task agency, um, the task, whatever, the government came and confiscated all the eyewitnesses' accounts of that massive jellyfish UFO, confiscated all the documents, all the data, and they forbid journalists and people to even reference it. You were not allowed to reference it at all. Look at that. I could, I could get a, wow, I'm talking about this, but this UFO, you all, all kinds of beams of light came down and it's what it looked like a jellyfish is what happened. Let me look up here. And they went hush hush. And um, they got a hold. Somehow the United States, they thought US, the U.S. was invading them. They did. They, with this great big massive uh, jellyfish UFO, they thought it was the end of the world and the USA was invading them. And it was coming from the sky is what they said. But the United States, I somehow were able to, it was like three something or four something in, a, in the morning when this all happened. And they could pinpoint the uh, the time and I think the location of when it happened. But it was the strangest thing. Hello. Um, thank you for joining. Um, you had a bit, you woke up and the moon was wild looking. Rays of sun showed a bright light um, like that of a star, but not too far. It was weird. Yeah, there is a lot um, you are going on about this, but there are these jellyfish liking UFOs. And I don't know if they look like, you know, organic like jellyfishes or something, but they're, when the scientists uh, did examine the asphalt and samples of the windows, they melted. It was like plasma beams, plasma lasers, literally melted a hole straight through those windows, melted it perfect two to three inches uh, through the windows and uh, in the asphalt, but no one had any, they would not give any uh, inclusive information, none of it. They wouldn't do it at all. There was also something else that was said. They noticed that when um, the, the orangish-like um, color appeared when that UFO was like hovering over, they smelt in the air some could they, call, they called it a PFO zone. You could smell its presence in the air. And um, I think I did a video, it was probably five days ago now. A uh, Trey 57 had documented um, these uh, brownish, orangish clouds where the UFOs hide inside. They hide it inside the clouds. And he was 
he specifically noticed the exhaust coming from them and I, I shared his video on the YouTube on the you on the it's like um disgusting exhaust or something coming from the ufo in the sky you all there is something up there there is now look at this how weird this looks over here this is the sun rising they're they're in the clouds too these ufos and this sun is so bright when they were describing in that um uh eyewitnesses account how they could not it was that ufo at one point became so bright they could not even look at it it hurt their eyes something else i'm going to tell you about it you all if you're just tuning in i'm i wanted to talk about the ufos that look like a jellyfish but it come out here and i saw the sun is behind a great big cloud like it was yesterday evening in in the um in the western sky now they got a big old cloud parked in front of it again there's something going on up there and um, they don't want people to see. But there was one other thing that people noticed happen uh, when this UFO showed up and they didn't know it. When they were awakened around four something in the morning or three something, they, uh, these people reported being awakened from their sleep with a um, very, very, very unsettling feeling within them. They were very unsettled, like something was wrong and um, they didn't even know it was out there, but they got awakened. Uh, a lot of people got very depressed, feelings of depression. Um, they had nightmares. And um, there were some other, other symptoms that they reported with the arrival of that UFO. It brought about those feelings, you all. This is, we're, we're talking about um, advanced technology that's up there in the sky. If they were reporting symptoms like that back then, waking up and um, feeling very uneasy, like something was, it was very unsettled with the uh, presence of this massive UFO, they called it a mothership, um, that literally sent down beams of light and pierced two to three inches of hose in the asphalt and in the uh, windows, perfect, drilled right through it. Um, it had a smell to it. it light up different colors and um, it made like a red um, red area in the sky when it was time to leave and it shot straight through it and disappeared um, so I don't know if it came in and out of the dimension or not but I just saw something else this morning that uh, these red lights were seen over the Pacific Ocean and um, I don't know when the red lights appeared but they could see, they could be seen in the sun, in the in the um, the plane above, red lights glowing over the Pacific Ocean. Someone said, you know, sometimes they appear when there's going to be like a an earthquake or something like that occurring. But I was going to read more of that, some kind of an account that happened, also. But this was like in 2014, red lights and another location. And this one person reported seeing a massive single beam of uh, reddish orange light shooting straight up from the ocean floor up into the sky. So there's somebody, there's something under the water as you all. It literally, they, they saw it shoot up from the ocean straight up into the sky, one solid beam. So they've got their technology and is that where we got our technology? Did we get our technology from them, whoever they are? Did we make deals with the bad aliens? Um, because that's not nice. It really isn't. Um, but all of this stuff that's happening, and I think I'm, I think that's probably a reason why a lot of people woke up at times. You all, don't, don't get yourself in trouble on here. You don't want to get yourself in trouble because there really is no need to get yourself in trouble on here at all um there isn't so um what was i saying i'm not going to look at the comments and try to look at this too okay they got that sun going through whatever that was going on behind there they, they're done doing whatever they're doing um this is real all of this stuff that's going on and i think there's there's a reason that people are all of a sudden waking up stiff necks as if uh, they did something wrong, lifted something wrong, their backs are, it's not, and it's not, um, 
if you've woke up with another uh, neck hurting, your neck being sore as if you pulled muscles or you got strained in your back, you're not alone because I woke up this time. It was different for me. It was my neck like that, but then I felt like all the way down my back, like um, I felt like all the muscles in my back were strained and my knees, I thought I cannot even move them. I couldn't even move them in the bed. They hurt so bad. And I thought, what is going on? And um, I think there's some kind of a frequency out there. And as with these UFO that was in Russia that people reported, can you all hear me? The people reported the UFOs in Russia. They got feelings of depression. They had very, very, very uneasy feelings um, within their spirit that something was wrong. Some people thought they were under attack. And... Um, the, there was a smell in the air. Let's see how bright this is. You can't even look at the sun. It's that bright. That's how bright it is. There was a smell in the air, and it, when it looked like a jellyfish, when all the beams of light were coming down, it literally burnt. It burnt holes in the asphalt, perfect holes, and burnt holes through all the window panes that those beams, those beams, those beams were, were moving all around on the ground. I think they were they were like spinning or something like that. So um, I don't think it's unusual. You know how they talked about how paradise, that place in paradise, it got burnt up. Um, and there's that theory going around that it was like um, uh, laser beams coming from space or something like that. What if there was like UFOs up there um, and they, they didn't like that area or some type of people or even more extraterrestrials in that area and they wanted to get rid of it. So they just shot their beams of light down and caught the place on fire. Um, I don't think that's not uh, too far-fetched. Maria, honey. Yeah, your neck and shoulders and ears are hurting again. Something's going on. Hello there, Apple Brooks, honey. Yeah. So I'm wondering, is there going to be, you know, they've been trying to keep all of this stuff under taps. All these sightings of these UFOs, and you know there's m probably upwards of over a million if you were to um, put all of the UFO uh, documents, the data, the sightings all together. It's probably over a million. I want to say nothing. Maybe some, some parts of, um, there's the moon up there. Maybe some parts of the world, some segments of society are in cahoots with them. They probably are because they got infiltrated by the extraterrestrials. Um, oh, it's buffering. That's about right. Um, I am surprised. If this thing is um, buffering you all, this is perfect because so you, you all can talk in here and you can share what's going on where you're at. I think it's wonderful from all over the world. Um, let me do this right here. You felt sick and nauseous. <gasps> yeah. There's been sightings of strange objects in the heels of whales. Um, what if these, um, some of these glowing light, people think, you know, Oh, uh, if there's going to be UFOs, it's going to be Project Blue Beam. It's all going to be fake. I don't think it's going to be fake. I don't think that um, in 1977 in Russia, when they saw what looked like a big gigantic jellyfish up in the sky and um, the laser beams coming down from it and piercing holes in the asphalt, that's a Project Blue Beam. No, I don't think it is. That was real. And the people had overwhelming feelings of depression. They were awakened from their sleep at around four in the morning with a dreadful feeling. They had a dreadful, dreadful feel feeling. And they thought that they were under attack uh, when that great big mothership showed up. And um, their technology is super, super advanced. So I don't really put much uh, thought into that Project Blue Beam whatsoever. I don't, you all. Because I think these UFOs are real. There's been too many uh, encounters. There have been too many um, documentations. 
too many eyewitnesses account, too many people abducted, um, otherworldly beings. You know, they have, um, I guess, not too terrible experiences with them also. Um, You eat healthy and you have gut issues. You eat to have gut, you got gut issues. You eat too healthy to have it. There's a lot of people who eat really healthy and then all of a sudden they're having things happening to them. Yeah, hit that like button, you all. It's early morning. If you're just tuning in at the very first part of this video, the sky right there in front of that sun, they had a massive cloud, just like yesterday. It was massive and beams of light. Uh, you could see the beam, the shadow beams coming from the sun. Um, so something is up there and they don't want people to see it, but you literally could see the partitioning of the rays that were coming just like yesterday in the um, western sky, like right up there, massive clouds covering the sun with those shadows that uh, made the sun look like it was rotating counterclockwise is what was happening. You all, you might want to get you some survival skills. If you ain't, if you ain't got no survival skills, you, you might want to get some how to survive uh, off the land or something like that. How to take care of yourself if society was uh, to completely go down. Completely, you all, you got to fend for yourself. In some instances, and some people are finding that out right now. They got to fend for themselves uh, in this world that we live in, especially if you're going to be cut off from certain of society. Oh, Tiffany, honey. <laughs> Your big jellyfish. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in about that jellyfish, um, it was a video I did last night. It was under the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Did it exist? And um, was looking into it, and there was this one picture... And it showed the men in the book with gigantic jellyfishes uh, in the sky. It looked like the sky with tentacles hanging down. And I thought I, I thought there was like a video about an an alien invasion with giant jellyfishes and stuff. So I went to research it, and um, and I saw that in Russia there was an account of giant jellyfish in the sky, it was a massive mothership. And um, people could smell um, like the exhaust in the air. They could, um, they had an overwhelming feeling of dreadfulness. They thought they were under attack. Uh, there were um, beams of coming down, piercing through the asphalt. You know, you don't stand a chance with that technology. If there's technology, which there is, that's out there, and it's coming from the sky, and they got big, massive beams of light that can come down, laser beams that can pierce holes into your asphalt, pierce holes straight through glass, melt it, but have a perfect hole. Who stands a chance against uh, that type of technology? Especially if it's coming from above, and you're here on the earth trying to take refuge with it. Um, yeah, and coming from UFOs, there, there are not, up there in the sky, there are some bad, um, there's benevolent and there's malevolent, there's some mal malevolent beings up there, uh, who do not, um, like humanity. But there are some benevolent beings who do.
reading. Um, oh, yeah, I like the porch too. It's pretty with all the plants, with the greenery. I can't wait when uh, it comes time for spring and summer. And it just, because it just brings um, the colors out. It all together right here. Ah, uh, thank you, Tony, honey. I'm trying to swap out my clothes. <laughs> I try not to wear the same shirts, even though I do have a, I do have clothes, but I have a tendency to wear the same shirts at times because um, I get so busy around here, and it's comfortable. Uh, you're welcome, Tiffany. These grapes are ready to eat. There's, they're very, um, they're full of water, you all. Yeah, they taste pretty good. There's some that are low. The, I know the chipmunk likes to come in. Um, they like to get the grapes too. Yeah, they are seedless. They're seedless. Oh, uh, you could fall asleep. Who has time? <laughs> who has time <laughs> to set out and lay in a camp hammock here? I don't have time to do that. You all, there's so much to be done. I'm lucky if I get to sit down at times. It it it, it sounds ideal. Just lay out on a hammock and relax it really does maybe one day uh, when life isn't so busy with so much stuff to do even though i know we need to take time out it's all right it really is um Do I have problems with critters getting into your garden, Susan, honey? Yes, we do. Um, the main ones with the voracious appetite who will literally destroy your gardens are the groundhogs. Um, they'll eat all your hard work up. That's what we mainly have a problem with is those groundhogs. And... Um, it's okay. The bunnies are cute. They can they walk they hop around the yard and eat clover, and um, but it's the groundhogs. Chipped. They're nice to look at. The voles um, underground. They'll damage your roots. But yeah, these squirrels are so. It's never ending, Susan, honey, at times. It really is. But that's all right. That's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Wild turkeys destroy your gardens here. Well, we've got extra fencing on the bottom parts of our garden, like chicken, not chicken wire, but little bitty small square fencings. Um... So the groundhogs can't um, burrow through it. They will remove anything that they can with their hands. They will. They'll knock things out of the way They'll, if they're bound and determined. We've had to put bricks and stuff all along the upper part of the garden because they were getting in there eating the cucumbers, eating the bean plant tips. Uh, they'll eat your whole garden up and you won't get nothing. And the raccoons at night, too, around here. I remember the neighbor, before she passed, she had lived here, I don't know, around, she was around 80-something. 
raccoons were a problem. She said, <laughs> she said, either you are the raccoons, what are you going to do? When you got to can your food and grow your gardens and the raccoons are literally destroying your gardens. Um, so, yeah, they're very um, populous around here. Raccoons, uh, groundhogs, they live out in the country, so they got um, lots of area to do stuff in. You sleep when you lie down, but you can't hear. That's strange. Rhubarb sauce. The first time I've ever um, tasted rhubarb is when I was little. We went to this cookout, and I tasted it, and it it tasted like the smell of Noxzema, and that did it for me. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to taste like, but it tasted like the smell of Noxzema, and I... Um, I only ate it one time since then when my husband made a rhubarb strawberry pie. And I don't like pies, but that was really good because it was like a cobbler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, and um, good morning. Yeah. So I was talking about a giant jellyfish UFO that was reported in the sky, but it was in Russia. And um, there were many eyewitnesses' accounts, and its mere presence awoke people from their sleep with a very dreadful feeling around four something in the morning. And um, it sent down beams of light that pierced through the pavement, pierced through the windows of people's house, two to three inches of holes. Um, there was a smell in the air from it. It had like, um, looked like a great big bulb like a jellyfish bulb, I guess, that was released from underneath it. And it went over the rooftops and stuff, and then it went back up into that um, massive UFO. And um, that UFO went into these gray clouds in the sky, and it was lighting up certain areas of the gray clouds. And um, when it was ready to finally leave, it was so bright, you couldn't even look at it. It hurt your eyes to look at it. It, uh, the mere presence of it, the technology or whatever frequency it had, it caused people to have nightmares. It caused people to get depressed. Let me flip this around. I need another drink. It caused people to get depressed. And when it finally left the area, it headed toward like these uh, oranges, like reddish clouds or something. There was something in the horizon. I can't remember it, but it made a great big red area it disappeared straight through that red area that it made, like a red circle, and um, it left. And the authorities um, confiscated every single eyewitness account, all the data that was gathered, um, and they forbid the people to speak about it. And you had scientists did not want to uh, investigate it at risk of losing their reputations. So that went hush-hush. Yeah, Danny, honey, and that's not easy, especially if you don't like doing stuff like that. <sighs> Tentacles in the sky, yeah. On the day the earth, okay, well, let's think about it. the day the earth stood still. What about, what was that movie? I think it was an old UFO movie. There were like these great big old things that came up from the earth or came out of the sky. They had a big round body and they had these, these big long metal tentacles that were, I guess, taking the people. Um... Um, uh, rhubarb is very good for humans. Yeah, well, we have a rhubarb plant down in the lower garden that comes back every year. We didn't do anything with it this year. Oh, Gort the alien was the day the earth stood still. Okay, thank you to test us and the military failed. The men in black film had giant jellyfish in it. Okay, so they exist. There you go, they exist. 
And you may say, Gina, honey, you think everything is yeah, they should in the movies. Yeah, they're, you better pay attention because they're telling you what's out there. Even though it may seem very, very, very far-fetched, it's out there. And um, they got to pass it off like that is what they got to do. Pass it off as sci-fi, entertain the people. But what the people doesn't realize, this stuff is real and it's not a laughing matter. And one day, um, now see, let's talk about this because the ships that I documented, the big long white ships, I've got a UFO ship playlist on my, um, this YouTube channel. The ships that I documented, they were long white ships with notches in them. And I call them light ships. They don't fit any of these eyewitnesses accounts of like that giant jellyfish thing with the laser beams coming out, a uh, piercing hose, and then nobody want to talk about it. And, or these other ones, they don't fit none of those at all. So, um, yeah, one day those ships, big long white ships, they're going to make a presence. They're going to make, they're going to make their presence known and everybody's going to see them in the sky because there's thousands upon thousands of them. But these other ones that um, are going about doing things, the the malevolent ones, they're not they're not the good ones. They're really not. Rebecca, did you see a representative to the UN? Greg Reese reported on it. She had a crown and looked kind of like a jellyfish. Wow, hello, everyone. Um, the further they go, that's right. Yes, um, sometimes I just like to listen to the birds and pause. I do. Um, I don't want to keep you all in here much longer at all. I'm probably going to have to get up here and um, figure out what I'm going to do with my day. Because I've got plenty of things to do. Lots of things, really, with my day. I just got to pick one. Pick something to do. Yeah. Well, I see 102 likes in the chat is what I see. Um, oh, Rebecca, honey, don't you, <laughs> Rebecca, honey, you be careful. Don't you, yeah, you post it when, after you're through driving. Yeah, do that, you all. You post it after you're through. Yeah, that's right. Um, Yeah, where did they get the Star Trek from, you all? Uh, they got it from somewhere. Uh, 1225 in New Zealand and the lights are out. Uh, Debbie Lacey, honey, good night. You have a, a wonderful sleep. Um, a very peaceful sleep. Yeah. So uh, I am going to go. And um, with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, you all. Thank you.